The Punisher is an anti-hero who takes crime into his own hands by making sure that criminals are put to rest for good. But who exactly is he? Today, let's take a look at the character and publication history of this iconic man in black. Frank Castle was a highly decorated member of the Marines, but he and his family were at the wrong place at the wrong time. The Castles were accidentally shot in a mafia execution, but Frank was the only survivor. Yet, even though Frank could identify all of the assailants, they all had rock-solid alibis. The legal system couldn't do anything to bring justice to his family's killers, and Frank almost ended up committing suicide. One thing was important though, justice was not going to work, and as such, Frank was going to carry out the one thing that these mobsters deserved, punishment. Frank became a one-man army and single-handedly raided the mob's headquarters, giving birth to the Punisher. In the process, however, Frank spared a single criminal named Billy Russo, but smashed his face through a window to send a message to the entire criminal underground. When Billy's face was stitched up, it left him permanently disfigured, and he took up the name Jigsaw. Many of you guys might be wondering why this is important, and that's because Jigsaw ended up becoming the Punisher's greatest nemesis, and especially unique feat considering that Frank ends up killing most of his enemies. The Punisher's war on crime frequently put him at odds with Spider-Man. In fact, many of his early appearances in comic books solely relied on a series of misunderstandings where Frank would think that Spider-Man is a crook, get proved wrong, and then team up with him to stop the real criminal. The Punisher has also had frequent run-ins with Daredevil, and while their missions are usually the same, their methods are different with Daredevil opting to put criminals through the legal system as opposed to Frank's kill em all mentality. Daredevil is not the Punisher's biggest fan though, even going so far as to form a team of other street level heroes to take him down. Despite this, Frank respects Daredevil, thinking that he's doing good work despite not killing the bad guys. Helping out on the Punisher's crusade is Microchip, who makes all of Frank's gear as well as general elite hacksaw stuff. He and the Punisher were a team for a very long time, until he died, and and then came back to life later, because nobody is allowed to stay dead in comic books, even when they're just tech gurus. The Punisher was an extremely popular character in the 80s and the early 90s, to the point at one time, he had three separate series going on at once, and was constantly making guest appearances in other titles. Yet because of his overexposure, fans started getting sick of Frank, and in 1995, all of the Punisher books were cancelled, and he was regulated to miniseries, occasional guest spots, and attempted revivals. This is what led to events such as Frank becoming a a mob boss, and later being manipulated by demons into committing suicide. If you think that's weird, then just wait, it gets better. Frank was resurrected by an angel named Gadriel, who gave Frank a part of his angelic essence and magical angel guns with the task of killing demons. Not only that, but apparently a one-off Punisher villain was actually a powerful demon lord who masterminded the death of Frank's family so that every person that Frank killed as the Punisher would serve as a member of his demon army, because 90s comics. This was all brushed aside when the Punisher got a brand new solo series where he more or less said, yeah, the angels wanted me to kill people for them, but I didn't like it, so they sent me back to Earth. From there, the Punisher mostly lived in an alternate universe of R-rated comics under the Marvel Max imprint, leaving the mainstream Punisher with the usual status quo, miniseries and occasional guest appearances. One noteworthy example is the famous story Civil War, where Frank rescues Spider-Man from Iron Man's forces after Stark hired known supervillains. Despite all of Captain America's resistance not being okay with having the Punisher on their team, his bravery in rescuing Spider-Man swayed Cap to bring him on board. Frank snuck onto Iron Man's base of operations and stole the plans for a superhero prison, but then murdered some villains that tried joining Cap's team, which got him locked up and taken out of the war. Now let's fast forward to Dark Reign, where he was killed by Wolverine's son, Dawkins, because Frank tried to kill Dawkins' boss, Norman Osborn. Now, remember the weird way that Frank came back to life the last time he died? Well, this time, he was resurrected by a vampire named Morbius as a patchwork Frankenstein-like monster. Frank and Castle helped Morbius and a bunch of other creatures fight off a group of monster hunters, and after doing so, got restored back to his normal human form, thanks to a magical artifact called the Bloodstone. The Punisher was back, got some more miniseries, helped out in some more crossover events, joined the Thunderbolts where he hooked up with Elektra and made Deadpool jealous in the process, and even got a couple short runs as a solo series. Honestly, Marvel keeps trying and trying to keep the Punisher relevant, but ever since his series got cancelled in 1995, no amount of relaunches, tie-ins, miniseries, or dramatic publicity stunts have ever allowed him to stick around despite the fact that what a lot of Frank Castle has been in lately has been pretty good. However, only time will tell. Who knows, maybe Daredevil Season 2 will make people care about Frank Castle for the first time in a long time, but for now, he's a relic of the 80s, past his glory days. So, which one of Frank's resurrections is sillier, the Demon Hunter or Frankencastle. Click to cast your vote or tweet me at Trailer Drake. If you want to learn more about the Punisher's brief fling with Daredevil's ex-girlfriend though, just click that annotation right there for my video on the history of Elektra.